Good afternoon, Dumelang, Molueni, Sanbonani, and Huemeda, Tobe, La Fellow South Africans, Lochani, Mda, Edum Plakati. Fellow delegates, before I proceed any further, let me add my voice uh, to those before me in paying tribute to Prince Mangosutu Butelezi. We offer our deepest condolences uh, to his family, to the Butelezi clan, to King Mrs. Zulu and the royal family, to the Inkata Freedom Party, and the entire Zulu nation. Dabezita dedicated his life to leadership and the impact of immense contribution can be seen and felt everywhere. Action SA joins the chorus of voices across South Africa that gives thanks for an exceptional life in service to the South African people. Let me also take this opportunity to convey our heartfelt condolences to the friends and families of the 77 victims, including children, who died at the horrific building fire at 80 Albert Street in Marshalltown, Johannesburg, two weeks ago. As I've said before, the disaster is a result of the failure of all three spheres of government that allowed the breakdown in the rule of law by the illegal hijacking of buildings and permitted the building's neglect. Delegates of this inaugural Action SA policy conference, it is an incredible privilege for me to stand before the fastest growing, the most diverse political party in South Africa. I am humbled by the speed at which we are building a rational and reasonable political home for all South Africans across the nine provinces of our country. Two weeks ago, Action SA, 10, three years old, on the day we launched in the midst of a global pandemic, you could have said the members of Action SA around this main table here behind me, as Michael has already indicated. In just three years later, I stand before you, the more than 600 delegates we have traveled from each of the nine provinces to an Action SA policy conference who represent just a fraction of our diverse membership. You have come to represent every one of the 52 districts and eight metros of our country where Action, Action SA has taken root. We come together, South Africans, who love their country, hate what has been done to it, and we are here, united, to find the solutions that are needed for the citizens of our country. I am humbled by your love of our country. I am moved by your commitment to our party. And I'm inspired by your belief that we can fix South Africa. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, delegates of this uh, policy conference, we come together at a time in which South Africans need hope. As South Africans, we do not need political parties to tell us what is wrong with our country. We all live with these challenges on a daily basis and know very well what's wrong with them. Today, we meet not to dwell on challenges, but to deliberate on the plans and solutions required to fix South Africa and build an inclusive and prosperous nation. It is this message of hope that you and thousands of other actioners throughout the country have gone door to door in communities across our beautiful country to share with the countless South Africans who are seeking a brighter future for our nation. 
It is in that spirit that today I want to share with all South Africans why my story and why I believe this policy sets Action SA apart. I was born and raised in a rural village called Haramozi in Amanskral in the north of Pretoria. My mother was a domestic worker in Johannesburg, and my father decided to die when I was just two years old. <laughs> I was raised in a tea shack in a child-headed household, raised by my sisters, the elders being 13 years my senior, and I knew the pains of hunger. In my second year of study, in 1980, at the University of the North, what is called University of Filimpopo today, the army surrounded the campus and gave us students six hours to leave campus. I never went back. I remember hating the control over my life, the notion that my success or failure would be determined by others. I made this decision to go into business studying as a commission sales rep in 1982, which resulted in conceiving the idea of starting my own manufacturing hair care business. This idea gave birth to Black Like Me in 1985 in Harangua Industrial Area. I went into business with two people who have had a profound impact on my life. The first was Connie, my partner in business and life for over 44 years now. Without whom, without whom, I would not be the man I am here standing before you today. And I would like her to stand if uh, she is somewhere around. My second partner was a white Africaner from Boxbeck by the name of, jo of Johan Krill. I don't know why perhaps we're here in, in uh, Boxbeck. <laughs> here Johan was the chemist who made our product. Johan and I overcame the, the enormous gap between white and blacks in the 1980s. It was here that I learned of the power of work to bring people together through a mutual desire to better their lives, even at a time when such an idea was inconceivable. Black Like Me grew to be one of the most successful hair care brands in Southern Africa, giving hundreds of people the dignity of work right in the townships of Pretoria during the height of apartheid. Make no mistake, I know that my story is an exception. But in a country with people as innovative and hardworking as South Africans, it should not have to be. Above everything else, I entered politics and ultimately started Action SA because I want to build a nation with achievement of success. However people chose to define that, is possible for all South Africans. Action SA ones to build South Africa, where government does not stand in the way of prosperity, but is an active participant in creating it. We want our young people to develop the skills they need to follow their dreams. We want communities to be protected from criminals. We want a South Africa where the lights stay on, we want a South Africa where government takes care of own, its own people. Ladies and gentlemen, South Africans and actioners, there can be no doubt that we come together at a time in which South Africans are facing tremendous difficulties because of their government. As we approach the 2024 elections, we shall mark 30 years of democracy in South Africa. Our society not only faces the legacy of apartheid, but 
the perpetuation of that legacy by an uncaring and corrupt government. Action SA is also not going to waste time apportioning blame for the predicament in which we find ourselves as a country. South Africans know who has governed them for the past 29 years, which has seen unemployment reach all-time highs, stage six load shedding becoming the norm, and our country became the most unequal nation on earth. The focus of our policy conference will not only dwell on the causes of the challenges we face. Instead, Action SA will be forward-looking in our approach and set ourselves apart by focusing on the people of our country and the solutions that are needed to fix South Africa. Over the past three years, and particularly over the past eight months, we have engaged with a broad range of South African experts. It is for this reason that we assemble here for the next three days. And I can assure you, South Africans, that what will emerge from this conference is a clear, distinct alternative that will bring hope to so many who have given up. <clears throat> Central to these outcomes must be a clear way forward to grow the South African economy and create jobs for our people. At the heart of this proposal is the need for economic certainty in policy direction and economic stimulus to move our economy forward, making it easier to hire more South Africans and altogether new approach to small businesses. But, but a growing economy cannot grow to reflect our unjust le legacy. It must transform it. Action SA is unapologetic in our recognition of the continued correlation between race and access to opportunity and quality services in South Africa. In addressing these challenges, we cannot be colorblind in our approach. While working towards a non-racial future, we must proactively work to address the legacy of racial exclusion. Action SA affirms our commitment to the empowerment of black, colored, Indian, and Asian South Africans. <laughs> While unequivocally aligning behind the repealing of the Triple B Act of, 20, uh, of 2003, which has never been broad-based in nature. <laughs> Our work is to fight poverty, not poor people. This is a distinction that matters. Action SA will be the first political party to table a comprehensive alternative aimed at inclusive socio-economic empowerment over the empowerment of the narrow class of tenderpreneurs. Included in our proposal is the establishment of the Opportunity Fund, an unprecedented fund contributed by the South African businesses that will uh, invest ex exclusively in grassroots opportunity generation in black, colored, and Indian communities that have been historically disadvantaged, as well as those that have been disadvantaged by 29 years of ruling party mismanagement and neglect. <laughs> this fund will achieve broad economic empowerment through investing in financing of education, skills development, and capital for small businesses, and a variety of interventions designed to create opportunities where the Triple B Act of 2003 has failed to reach. Additionally, we propose a year of voluntary public service for young South Africans living in school. <laughs> Without the prospect of further study or job or starting a business. This reality is tr true for too many young people and Action SA must provide young people with a place to learn skills, 
gain experience, and drive the meaning that comes with work and productivity. My fellow delegates, Action SA must emerge from this policy conference with a tough on crime approach that changes the conversation from the rights of criminals to the rights of victims and society. We cannot tolerate, we cannot tolerate a South Africa where law-abiding citizens live in fear while criminals act with impunity. Central to addressing this is ensuring that criminality is met with harsh consequences. Let me be crystal clear about what I mean by this, especially given my vocal stance on capital punishment in the past. It is certainly, uh, certainly true that I have been a believer in capital punishment as I've watched law-abiding South Africans being raped, murdered and pillaged by violent criminals who should not have been set free in the first place. I believe many South Africans have witnessed the brutality of certain crimes in South Africa and shared my cultural reaction to these heinous acts. When our Senate came together last month to consider the outcomes of our political consultative process that saw us engage with experts, the public and our internal structures, an argument, an argument emerged which compelled me to recognize my own beliefs in, in capital punishment. Chief among these concerns is the highly flawed state of our criminal justice system and the cost associated with navigating it. The South African government has a long way to go in terms of becoming a capable, efficient and trustworthy matrix of institutions. The question of who lives and dies should not be a matter that should be entrusted to those wholly dysfunctional government. It is equally apparent that the implementation of, part of capital punishment in South Africa would disproportionately prejudice poor South Africans leading to their conviction and execution, while wealthy South Africans accused of the same offenses would have the resources to avoid such a sanction. <laughs> this fact was conveyed to me by experts who demonstrated the relative disadvantage experienced by poor South Africans, confronted by the ineptitude of our current criminal justice system. That is why I believe the right approach is rather to change minimum sentence so that violent criminals may never be released to harm another person again. <laughs> Lifetime imprisonment should mean exactly that. Moreover, criminals should end their keep and make right with society through the provision of their labor to assist to build our nation's infrastructure and improve the communities they have harmed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, delegates on energy, I urge all delegates not to buy into the political games about the end of, roll, of rolling blackouts. Load shading began in 2007 and has continued regularly until this very day, some 16 years later, when it became a permanent part of our lives. We cannot buy into the spin that this government should be trusted to simply load shading because there's an election next year when they have not addressed this problem in 16 years. As long as we continue to rely predominantly on captured state in, in entities like ESCOM for the provision of, equal, of quality services, we will continue to find ourselves, unfortunately, in the dark. In this respect, Action SA's plan before this policy conference proposes a number of interventions that will ensure that South Africans' power remains on forever. Finally, on immigration, 
I want to assure South Africans that Action SA will present a strong proposal that occupies the rational middle ground on this important issue. On either side of Action SA are the extremists. On the one side, there are those who want to ignore our borders or call anyone xenophobic for raising the issue of the failed implementation of our immigration regulations and our porous borders. On the other side, there are those who are willfully blind to the benefits that regulated immigration can offer our country and act like quasi-law enforcement officials by unlawfully raiding businesses and detained people. Action SA reaffirms our belief that South Africa was built on the back of migrants. We want the people of the world to come to South Africa, but they must do so legally and obey our laws once here in our country. <laughs> Action SA will not place the blame at the door of foreigners. The blame for our immigration crisis belongs at the feet of our government. We have failed to police our borders. We have failed to document people entering South Africa. We have failed to deport those who have committed crimes. Our work is to fight failing ruling party immigration policies, not immigrants themselves. This distinction to us matters. Equally, we must propose some hard diplomacy as it relates to countries who create political economic disaster is, disasters in their country and then compound an immigration crisis for us here in South Africa. <laughs> South Africa. South Africa must use its relative strength in the region and abroad to hold those governments to account for the spillover effects that manifest itself on our borders. My fellow South Africans, this conference is the culmination of an inclusive process based in evidence research, expert opinions, consultation, and empathy for the lived experiences of South Africans in developing a policy suite. Over the next three days, you will witness a political party continuing our engagement on the solutions required to address the greatest challenges our country faces. You will see Action SA delegates who love their country deeply and who are invested in the work to fix it. They form part of a party that offers what no other party can offer, a growing and diverse political home that is bringing South Africans from all nine provinces and from all walks of life into the abundant center of South African politics. But the thing about a political party is that it is as powerful as voters choose it to make it. If you are watching these proceedings from home and you are not registered to vote, we cannot help to give the power to the solutions that arise from this policy conference that you and every South African so desperately need. As I speak to you, there are 13 million South Africans who are eligible to vote, but are not registered. In addition to this, there are 14 million South Africans who are registered to vote, but have lost confidence in the democratic project and just stopped voting altogether. That is 27 million people. To put this number into perspective, only 12 million people voted in the last election. Many South Africans mistakenly think that by not voting, they are punishing our current government. So, unfortunately, wrong you are. The only way that change will ever take place in South Africa is if people come out and cast the vote for a party that will deliver the change. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to leave you with a thought that might begin as a whisper given our national despair, but it will grow to become a deafening roar that is heard across the townships, 
and suburbs, the villages and CBDs, the farmlands and the informal settlements. We can fix South Africa. We can fix South Africa. We can fix South Africa. Ah, thank you.